Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Before we get started, go ahead and hit the subscription button. Hit the like button. Let's go. Now, I'll preface this, this uh, session with uh, letting you know that I've been working out. Just finished working out. So I will be sweating in the wiping sweat. But... I had to get this video in and I had to get the workout in, of course. And I got other things on my plate uh, throughout the day. So it is what it is, but that's a lesson within itself, fellas. I uh, got to get it done. So this um, video is about something that came across uh, my radar maybe a day or two ago. And this is in regards to Army Staff Sergeant Jonathan Pentland and a young man, an identified young man, but the reports are saying his, his name is uh, Dwayne, but uh, an identified young man, a black young man that uh, got into a situation with Staff Sergeant Pentland. And this happened in Columbia, South Carolina. Army Staff Sergeant Pentland is a Staff Sergeant with uh, Fort Jackson, a uh, military base. Now, ironically, that's the same base I did my basic training back in 95, 96. And so, uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's kind of weird within itself, right? But um, let's let's dissect this because I want to hit this from a different angle, so a few different angles. Now, there's a video out there, and I I may put the the link of the video in my description. But there's a video out there where uh, this young man, this uh, this young brother, comes in contact with Staff Sergeant Pentland and Pentland's wife. Now, the uh, the delivery of Pentland is very aggressive, very threatening, and uh, on the bully side. Now. When you see this video, you know, you're going to maybe be bothered, pissed off, irritated. And uh, I was too. I wasn't irritated because Pitlin is white and this young unidentified brother is black. That's not what pissed me off. And I'll, later I'll tell you why. I was pissed off because Pitlin just came off as a bully. It was obvious that the young man did, didn't want any smoke, uh, wasn't aggressive. He was kind of bowing down um to me it appeared that something was kind of off with them uh mentally uh, something was off with them I, I thought he was slow uh mentally slow and that maybe that's not the uh politically correct term but uh cognitively he was he was kind of off to me and so uh i felt that pentland sensed that and he continued to press his foot upon his neck, fig figuratively speaking, figuratively speaking. So I didn't like the bully aspect of it. Now, let's broaden this context. Uh, this young man was also accused of, prior to running into Pentland, he was, he was accused of touching a young lady without consent in the neighborhood. He was also accused of picking up a baby without consent within that neighborhood. So uh, that's disturbing within itself. You, you can't touch women that don't want you to touch them. And you can't pick up someone's baby without consent. That's, that's kind of, that could be scary. You know, that could be scary. And, uh, I ask you, what would you do in that situation? Whether you thought the guy was slow or not, what would you do if you came across this guy and word had gotten out that he touched some young lady without her consent, or that he picked up and or that he picked up a baby without the parents' consent? Now, I don't know if Pentland knew about the baby situation, uh, but his wife did say. You can hear the wife saying that this young man had gotten into an altercation with a young woman 
prior to them coming in contact with the, with one another. So the wife did uh, speak on that. Now, let's take the race away because that could be a matter of a circumstance. It is a matter of circumstance. This young man is ha happens to be black, apparently happens to be white. Let, let's take that after the, the equation because Pittman didn't say anything racially insensitive. He didn't say anything racist. Uh, nothing about race was spoken of. Um, nothing. These two gentlemen, these two males, happen to be of different race. Now you got Black Lives Matter involved. Why? Why? I know why. You know, to cause uh, discord and to fuel the fire and to get more money coming their way. But this isn't, uh, on the surface, this isn't a racial issue. These are two males that had conflict. And when you broaden the context, this gentleman has two investigations going on, you know, about him prior to him getting into it with Pentland. He has two open investigations. One, like I said, for touching a woman without her consent. I don't know where he touched her. And for picking up a, a, a child, picking up a baby without the parent's consent. And that's disturbing. I ask you again, what would you do? You know, so I see a lot of people on social media uh, voicing their opinion, saying this is racism, making it a racial issue, but you don't know if it's a racial issue. Like I said, when we take race away and we just look at the context, the facts of it, what we do know, we know there are two open investigations against this young man. That's what we do know. Now, did Pentland have a right to put his hands on the young man? No. He had no right to knock the young man's phone out of his hand, destroy his property. He had no right to push that, that young man. So justice, uh, the court, I'm not, not the court, but the justice system is dealing with him appropriately. He has been charged with third degree assault as he should be. Uh, but in broader context, if you be honest with yourself, you'd probably be charged with something worse if that young man was in your community doing that. Take race away. Just deal with the facts, what we do know. We don't know Pittman's heart. Now, he does come off as a bully to me. You don't have to be that aggressive, that threatening. Just, hey, a common voice would, would have got the same thing done, probably in a quicker fashion. Another thing that bothers me, this is kind of a side note, brothers, never connect yourself with a woman like Pentland's wife, man. This woman was barking and yapping and she made things worse because she was fueling this man's ego. She's in his ear and, and talking mad, mad mess in his ear and that can... That can, can, that can fuel a man's ego when his woman is in his ear. But as you as a man, you have to have enough control, enough authority, enough self-awareness to be able to tell that woman, chill, go in the house. There was no reason for her to be out there barking like that. There was no reason. But, you know, it gives me an inkling of what goes on in, inside their home. She She's the masculine one. She runs the show. That's, that's obvious. And so, you know, I know guys like Pentman and uh, they have a lot of times titles with authority and they take those things for granted. You know, they, 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 uh, they use it unrighteously, unrighteously. And so I know guys like that, that play the tough role, play the authoritative uh, role at work or, you know, on the street, but when you get home, you know, they don't run anything. And I, I had a manager like that, that man, he, t he played the tough role, but you know, I came across he, him and his wife one time and man, she was uh, talking to him crazy. I was like, man, I didn't know that was the same guy. And she was just totally disrespectful to him. So I know what's going on in their home, trust me. And so that's why he was coming at that young man so aggressively and, uh, yeah, that's why he probably takes pride of being a staff sergeant, a drill sergeant, because he's not running anything in his home. Uh, so, yes, he, he deserved to be charged. But this is not a racial issue uh, right now. We don't know that to be. And uh, 
I don't think uh, we'll ever uh, discover that it's about race because he didn't say anything racially uh, motivated, maybe racially charged, racially insensitive. And I'm going to tell you something else, brothers. We got to be very careful about being so sensitive and operating on a feminine wavelength where no one can say anything to us. Another man, non-black man, can't uh, be aggressive with us, uh, can't be manly with us, can't be masculine with us. We got to be careful with that because you don't want to go down this slippery slope of being treated like a child or a woman. I want black, white, non-white, Hispanic, Indian, Asian, whatever. I want to be able to have masculine, uh, if need be, aggressive conversations with another man. Don't treat me like a woman. Don't treat me like a child. And so you got to be careful about any time there's a conflict or confrontation between a non-black and a black, we automatically run and cry racism. That's BS. That's BS, man. And uh, we're acting like women when we do that. Where you can't tell us anything. You can't conf can't have confrontation with us. Can't meet us face to face with aggression. And uh, I understand a man not coming to a woman like that. But men, let men be men and, and figure it out. And, you know, sometimes cooler heads prevail. Sometimes fisticuffs come into play. Sometimes it might end in death. But we have to stop taking the submissive role. Right. And believe in this ideology of white supremacy. No one has supremacy over you. You have to give that up. So I don't believe in white supremacy. No one has supremacy over me unless I give that up. The, the whole white supremacy thing is BS unless you feel like you, you are inferior. I don't feel like I'm inferior at all. And so uh, start running to the racism card. We don't know this to be racism. BLM has no business being involved in this situation. The man was charged for assault, third degree assault, rightfully so. Now, we'll see what happens to this, this young man, this, this brother. We'll see what happens. Like I said, there's two open investigations on him. And uh, so he's not off the hook either. He's not, he's not innocent or uh, guilty yet. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but he did seem a little off. And uh, reports are saying that he, he needs uh, medical help because something's off with him mentally. And, you know, if so, hey, get him that help. But uh, he's not off the hook. And I ask you again, what would you do if that happened in your neighborhood, taking away race? Get the emotion out of it. Just deal with the facts and keep it in full context. Okay? So let's get off this feminine wavelength. Let's stop acting like women uh, where, you know, a non-white can't, can't come to us aggressively. Hey man, meet him with that same energy, but uh, don't you don't have to bow down at all, you know. Uh, that's that's all I'm saying, and and also, I see the BLM and other people picketing in front of this man's house, the staff sergeant's house, and uh, like I said, I don't think this is a racial issue, but have that same energy in front of the homes. Of blacks who kill blacks have that same energy in front of the homes of drug dealers black drug dealers have that same energy in front of the home of black molesters that we know are molesters that are in the neighborhood uh have that same energy but not just when you two two different races uh get into it and it's not just two different races it's when a black has a confrontation with a white that don't don't just show up there so uh, and that'll prove if you're about righteousness and, and principles or you have a hidden hidden agenda so uh yeah man stay focused stay woke and uh let's just be men and uh let's not, not let's not play that emotional passive race card because everything is not about racism right peace